Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be working on the charger front subframe. Now that the rear subframe is in the car and everything worked out. So all that measuring that I did and all that time I put into the rear subframe really paid off. The fixtures really worked out. So I have the front fixture right here and the front subframe is pretty close to being done. So I still need to send off some files to send, cut, send so they can cut them and bend them and send them back. But besides that, I'll do some measuring on this. I need to make this bar that connects this side over here, but it has to go around the pumpkin side of the front differential. So it has to pretty much come like this, bow out, and then come back in. Unlike that side, which is straight, and uh, I need to modify a few things. I wanna actually bring some of these in closer. I have them a little bit too far spaced out because I used two washers on each side. I need to get some thinner washers is what I need to do. So I need to find some of those. Also, on the rear suspension, I was gonna make something similar to the, you can see where they're at, where they're at. The Trackhawk rear struts right there, they have like a fork. But since I'm running true coilovers and the whole suspension setup's different, it's in a charger, I was, you know, I, I was gonna modify these to make them work with a fork. So I cut the bottom off on the lathe. Now I need to reorder these. So these are off the Lexus. And the reason I need to order these instead of using the charger ones that I have on there currently is the charger ones aren't meant to hold a spring. So they have a smaller bolt running through them. And these are meant to hold the spring. So they're a little bit beefier and I won't have to worry about this bottom piece breaking off because on the charger one, it is very thin and it's not, it's not meant for what I'm using it for. But right now, the car doesn't drive. So it's okay for just pushing it around and pulling on a trailer and stuff like that. And those are actually longer. So I'll be able to thread it up further up the, uh, the digressive shock instead of it just being pretty much towards the end. So I'll reorder those and I need to make some lower control arm bushings or not bushings, but the, uh, the part where it goes in to the knuckle. So I need to make something on the lathe that just has this taper on it and then I could make a lower control arm in the rear. I needed to do something similar to the front, but instead of it having this taper on the lower control arm, it's gonna have a similar ball joint that just presses in. So I'll just use the factory ball joint and just press it in, which will be really, really nice because then it'll all work like factory, but I'll have it be able to adjust from the backside. So some people were saying, don't use Heim joints on the lower control arm, but Technically, that's the only way to make them adjust because they have ball joints on the uh, the front of the, the lower control arm, so you can't push it out from the front. Plus then you can adjust caster if you have two points. So what I'm gonna do on this front subframe is I'm going to actually move this mount. So this mount is gonna be normal, but the back one is somewhere around here and the axle is very close to it. So I'm just gonna push it back, make the, make the lower control arm a little bit wider since I have to make one anyway and it'll just make everything really simple. And then I could just have that mount come off of these points and it'll be really, really clean. So let's get to work. First off, I'm gonna head over to the machine shop with some material and uh, some dimensions and some bolts and stuff, make those pieces for the lower control arms, make some pieces for this,
Back over the junkyard from the machine shop and I got both of the rear lower control arm mounts made. So the knuckle goes into those. It's a 45 degree taper, nut goes on the back and these are about an inch and a quarter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the lower control arms out of inch and a quarter DOM tubing and then I'm gonna have heim joints. So I need to order heim joints as well but I'm not exactly sure if I'm just gonna order four right hand thread heim joints or I'm gonna order two left hand and two right hand. The reason I do that is because on the adjustable arms, I have left and right hand threaded heim joints on those. And I have it so if you push the adjustable arms forward, it pulls them in and if you pull them back or twist it backwards to the back of the car, it adjusts them out on both sides. So it's very consistent. It's not, you know, at first I had one of them backwards and I was like, you know, I should just flip all these and it'll be really, really nice, really simple. So when I take it to alignment shop or if I align it myself, then I don't have to be like, oh, this one needs to go forward, this one needs to go backwards. On the lower control arm though, since it is two heim joints on one arm, you have to drop the control arm, adjust it a little bit, put it back in. It's not that big of a deal, but it's, it's how it has to be. So what I'm gonna do now is there was a few things that I didn't, well, I didn't think about well, I kind of thought about it, but I didn't have really thin washers. So I used some larger washers on all these tabs. What I'm gonna do is cut the tacks on them, use these really thin, I think they're probably like one mil washers and reposition those tabs, re-tack them in. We'll get this subframe back in the fixture. So now I have the locations for the electric power steering rack. So what I'm gonna do really quick, I just thought about it when I saw it, I'm gonna add a piece of metal to connect that to just kind of triangulate it. So once it gets to the welding stage, I don't want any warpage. So the subframe is almost done. It just needs those power steering rack locations and that bar going across to tie those in. But yeah, let's get this upper part of the fixture off. I now have the fixture back together with a subframe in there and all these mounts tacked back in. So one thing that I did was I used smaller washers or technically 
they aren't washers, they're kind of shims. And you can see that one is the new one and that is the old one. You can see how much thicker it is. This one's pretty much paper thin. And that just gives you like a little bit of extra clearance. And I tried to fit the old engine mounts before I redid all this stuff and they were just a little bit too loose. So this just gives me like that extra bit, a little bit of clearance. And uh, you know, in the rear one, it really didn't need it, but this way, you know, it's it's just really nice when you're sliding really tight tolerance stuff together because it's still gonna it's still gonna crush a little bit anyway. But we have the front lower controller mount. I already have this ready to send to send gut send. Then I have this last engine mount bracket, and I need to get the dimensions off this. But I just welded two of these together to get the correct dimension from the center hole to the bar, which works out very well. So I have these, that. Um, I need to cut a quarter inch off of each one of these electric power steering rack mounts. They're a little bit too thick, so they would hang down below this line. So I put a, a ruler along both of the bars and uh, we don't want it to hang lower than the splash shield. And then the last differential mount right here, I was really not wanting to span all the way from here to there, which it would have made it really weak. So now we have a bar coming across through the electric power steering mounts. And look at that, a really nice span on both sides. So we'll just go to the bar there and go to the bar there, be good to go. On the other differential mounts, they're already tacked in with those spacers. Everything else is pretty much ready to go. Finish some of the templates for the subframe and I have this designed for the front splash shield slash the tow hook. I also have the power steering rack mounts tied in now. So one thing that I noticed was the bolt was hanging down about a half of an, half an inch too low. And I didn't want the bolt that holds the power steering rack in to be the lowest part on the subframe. If I ever bottom this thing out, I don't want it to cut the heads off the bolt and then nothing hold the power steering rack and that'd be very, very dangerous because then I'd have no steering. So I ended up countersinking both of those and they're perfectly flush, which is really nice. Actually, this is a nut. It just bolts backwards, but as you can see, nice and flush right there. So we have those tied in. I also have the templates for the front differential mount. So I'm just gonna go straight back to this mount and then I'm going to come over and like this and uh, that'll, that'll just be a bent piece of metal, weld all that, and then I'll have some triangles back here to support it a little bit more. The one thing I ended up doing, I said I was just gonna cross straight across with a bar, but I really did like how it looked. Plus, that'll give me a little bit more room for an oil pan. I'm gonna go dry some eventually, but for the time being, I'm gonna be wet some. So I'll need some room for a larger oil pan since I'm gonna to have to modify it, move some stuff around because the differential in the steering rack, that'll just give me a little bit of space, hopefully, because the oil pan will be somewhere, somewhere right here. As you can see, the rack's right there and the oil pan sits in front of it. So somewhere right here, it'll give me a lot of room to put, modify an oil pan. I'll probably put some baffles and stuff and it'll be a sheet metal. It'll be half cast, half sheet metal, but it should work. And then I think that's gonna be a lot nicer because these mounts are technically gonna be in a triangle to this bar. And then I'll put a gusset inside of it, which will be really nice. So we have all of the templates for the lower control arm. So the front one's really easy. The rear one, I'm gonna just do the normal position at first. And then if the differential and the axle, well, the diff will fit, but if the axle interferes with this mount, I'm just gonna move it back, like I said, just back here. So we'll try the first position first and then worry about moving it if it doesn't work after, you know, I'll tack everything in and then test fit the diff and the axle, make sure everything's gonna work happily together. So the only thing I'm not, or I don't have done yet is this bar that goes on this side. So I haven't done that yet because I wanna get this over here tied in and then figure out how close this bolt's gonna be. And you know, I could come pretty close over here and then I need a bow out like this by this mount and then back over. So I wanna make sure that everything is gonna clear and everything is gonna work well together. And then when I do that bar, I can make these mounts. These are for the rear splash shield mounts. So I'll just come up off of here with an L bracket and then the same thing off of that bar over there with an L bracket. I don't think we'll have any problems. So what I wanna do now is go home We'll design all this stuff, send it off to send, send, cut, send. 
the uh, only issue is it is Wednesday. It's already late, so I'll probably have to send this stuff tonight. They won't get it until tomorrow, and I probably won't have it till next week. So we'll get this finally all fabricated and finished up next week, which will be really nice. And then I'll have everything tied in, really be able to test fit the steering rack, the differential in there, the axle, the lower control arm, make sure everything's gonna fit well in the car or the, the mock-up Magnum outside. Actually, there's one flipped over now, so that'll be really easy. Just got finished designing all of the pieces that I needed in CAD, so I just need to send these to Send Cut Send. I'll do that in the morning, but everything is designed and it'll be really simple. Some of the parts need to be bent, and then some of the parts just need to be laser cut. But I think after this batch, there'll only be one more, and that's just gonna be the few little brackets as long as I don't have to move that rear lower control arm mount back. But I'm gonna end the video here. Can't wait to get this subframe done because it's one of those things where it's another big step in the charger charger's progress. I mean, once the subframe, subframe is done, really the only larger pieces that I have to make are the four lower control arms, which aren't gonna be that difficult. Uh, I think the most difficult thing next is gonna be the front knuckle because that's gonna have to be, um, most likely I'm gonna have to three scan the charger knuckle and the trackhawk knuckle and just kind of combine those to make those one. Hopefully I can find a 3D scanner for that, but I'm gonna end the video here. If you like these videos, make sure to click the subscribe button, thumbs up, throw a comment below. As always, see you guys next time.